Hello, welcome to this new, this new episode on uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Today I'm going to focus a little bit on uh, instances again <laughs> and uh, today I'll show you how to create a custom image. So we can start with normal custom images. Yeah, let's say that uh, let are created from existing instances. So let me go to a demo compartment where I can, let's say, select an existing I instance like this one and after i select on this instance create a custom image okay so i'll name it demo one instance and i'll click create custom image okay so this is a process that takes around uh, you know, a few minutes yeah two three minutes uh, at least to create it and what it's gonna do is gonna take ev everything that is already installed on that machine and it can be used as a baseline here for different machines if you remember in previous one we also created instance configurations yeah so this is also something similar with instance configurations but uh, this one can let's say be exported if we go back to compute and we go to custom images right now what we can do with these uh, images yeah we can export them okay so we can uh, click on the export menu when it's finished and we can use it in a different tenancy Okay, or you can send it to a bucket in a different region in our account. You have there multiple options. And also in here, we have the option of importing yeah, in the custom image menu where we can select the operating system. So yeah, based on the operating system, you're also, let's say, required to pay additional things if it is Red Hat and you have a subscription or if it's Windows. For the other uh, operating system, yeah, usage is free. Yeah, you can use it for free. So when you select Windows, yeah, to import it from your on-premise to OCI, you're gonna see that you certify that uh, you know the licensing. If you have mobility licensing from Microsoft and other things required in there, yeah, and you can import it in a bucket. Okay, I haven't talked about too much about the storage part, so yeah, I will leave it. Uh, to to go extremely in, in depth into that a little bit later. Now, if you see in here, yeah, process is at 20%. It started at 14, uh, yeah, it's been the 14 and uh, it's finished in 16. So it took uh, two minutes to create this uh, machine. So the size is it 100 GB. Remember, yeah, at a certain point, I said I will show you how to extend it. So I'll do it in the billing part, in the billing, in the block storage part. Yeah, when I'm gonna <laughs> explain it a little bit harder. Uh, and in here it is the size on disk yeah based on the data that is installed now from demo one instance i'll click create instance yeah i'll give a new a new name yeah, demo four something like that uh, and uh, i'll select uh, i can select uh, the shape yeah i can change the shape doesn't matter this time yeah because the shape can be uh, updated anytime on this okay i can change the network i can go to another vcn if needed i can put public ip as well and i click create after that the machine will be created and i'll be able yet to join that machine now these machines were created using the instance pools last time and now auto scaling so i don't need them anymore i'll terminate this remember if you don't click permanently delete uh, the attached volumes yet yeah, you'll continue paying for the volumes uh, uh, to, to Oracle so they're not so expensive but if you take uh, 10 uh, instances of uh, 50 GB each that means 500 GB that means around uh, 30 dollars per month yeah for uh, the instance only <laughs> because they're putting it in there very low price but in time if you have a lot of them it, the price will increase okay so I close this as you can see uh, in here you also have the capability to do actions on multiple instances those ones are terminated so i'm not able to do anything but if i want to go and start all of these restart them i can select and i click on the action button in here now other thing that is important here yeah, on custom images yeah uh, let me create another custom image that i want to use maybe for uh, let's say creating an operating system that is not uh, available in oci so i'll be in the compartment oc one i'll let's say created images let's give it the name in here i'll make it a standard tire yeah i'll not talk too much about this yet this is a bucket yeah where i'm gonna put different objects so in here yeah i'll select the bucket i'll click upload if i go let's say i want to create a debian image i'll go cloud.debian or, or or org yeah slash images cloud i'll select a, a version of debian that is available 
I will go in, I will download it on my computer and from there I will be able to upload it. Okay, so I have selected the, the machine, it is in QCAL format. I will upload it in here. It's not going to take too much time. Yeah, so 300 megabytes is going to take uh, a few seconds to put it. Uh, after the image it is uploaded, I will go and create a custom image from it. And because of that, yeah, I will be able to install an operating system that is not existing as a platform image directly in OCI. So this is some another useful uh, uh, capability yeah, of the um, custom images in there. So this is finished. Okay, let me go to compute. Let me go to custom images. And in here, I will click import image. Okay. So this is gonna be the BM image. Import the image from object storage. I only have one in bucket, so it's selected automatically. I will select the only object that I have in there. I will select the format as QCAL. If I have them from on premise, yeah, or from VMware, I have VMDK option. Or if I have exported already from another tenancy, I can put it as uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Leave the mode as para virtualized and I click import the image. So at that point, yeah, we need to wait around uh, 10 minutes. So this uh, importing takes a little bit more time. Yeah, and after that, I will be able to create a Debian image. I will pause it yeah, until it's finishing uh, the import. We're going to see how much time we really took yeah, in here when the finish menu will appear. The, f the finish time yeah, will appear in here. And uh, see you in a few seconds. So it took around uh, 12 minutes to create the image. Yeah, so right now we have a custom image. I go again on the custom image that we just created in here and I'll click create an instance. So let me name it Debian. Let's see. <laughs> Leave everything as it is. Yeah, let me increase a little bit the number of a CPU just for testing for provisioning faster. Let me select the demo VCM. I want to access it publicly, yeah, so let me leave it public. Yeah, it's gonna be just for demo purposes. I will delete it later. Let's look for a key in here. So, and download. It's not, this is the only key, so I'll use this one. And let me create it. Now, let's wait for the instance to be created. Yeah, we look at the completion. It's 0%, but it will jump very fast yeah, to 15, 40, and so on. So this is something very fast. And I will try to connect to this IP, but it does not have the network security group for SSH. So let me add that one. Okay. So now I have this and let me try to see if I'm capable of connecting. I don't know what is the default user for Debian. So I might get directly. Okay. Let's see for that private key where it is. Hopefully this is the key. It will work. <laughs> okay. Now let's put the user should be root at okay, yes. Permission denied. So root is not allowed to connect on Debian directly or the machine is still in provisioning mode. So what I can do in this case, let me go and use the console connection. I want to create a local console connection. So let me upload the public key and I'll try to use the VCM, yeah, uh, the VNC connection over it to see what's happening in the backend. Okay, so as you can see, we have this ready. Let me try it again. Let's create a VNC connection for Windows. 
I have copied that connection in there. Let's see what I need to change. I need to change. I, I don't think I have any other linking, so it should work. So the key in here should be. Oh, no. It's normal. I put the wrong key in there. So T1 should be the key and the public key for T1. So let's try it again anyway. Okay, yeah, so by default it looks like yeah, there is no password for the Debian user because I'm using uh, yeah, the key to do the connection, so it worked on this part. So yeah, you have a Debian uh, machine uh, that you can use and uh, that's it. Yeah, you, you can go and create different operating systems. Uh, uh, everything that you think it is needed for you yet yeah, for your work and uh, you, you can create a custom image uh, as you've seen it before and you can use it okay so we, you can check what is the version of the linux and i think this is lsb underscore release minus a okay released yeah so yeah this is the debian the, the bookworm version that we just installed it and so on so pretty interesting and very fast to do it. Yeah, in 15 minutes, yeah, you can have uh, Debian up and running, running for you. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Also, you've seen it. Uh, yeah, you also have the capability yeah, to use the um, uh, console connection. So that means that if you have GUI installed on that machine, you can go and you can try to to connect to it. In here, I do not have this. Yeah, so these are the things that needs to be changed. Yeah, we need to point them to the SSH key. So what I can take it, uh, let's say, very simple, I can go and um, copy the location for it, the full location. So this one, and I can try it again. Hope this is going to work. So here I have this backslash and type also the name. Okay, type it again, and if this is not going to work from first time, I will create a different video on how to troubleshoot and how you can do the connection. Okay, so let me create another one. The pinning exit means that it might not find the location for uh, yeah of uh, the pinning yeah command yeah command is part of the putty so it's not able to find that putty in here because I don't think I have it in installed so let's see I have putty on this machine no I don't have putty on machine because I'm using the console connections that I have as well so yeah I'll, I'll install putty later and create a different video for this part but anyway thank you very much for watching this and see you on next video